Good morning all. Hello, hello, good morning. Just going to wait for somebody to come and tell me that um, hopefully there's somebody live that can quickly tell me if you can see me, if you can hear me, if everything is okay. Welcome to you and happy Tuesday. And today our topic is well, I will be sharing my five top tips. Actually, I've got a few more. <laughs> I'll be sharing my top tips for fast tracking your progress with your dog. So it's not going to be one of these <laughs> videos. Hi, Liz. Liz, just let me know if you can see and hear me OK, please. Good morning. Great. Thank you very much. Thanks for letting me know. I'm not sure how to pronounce your name, but I'm going to say Masa. Thank you for letting me know and thank you for being here, everyone. So, yes, our topic today is um, how to fast track your progress. Thank you, Les. Um, and it's something we all desire, right? Something we all feel because I know what it feels like to have a sensitive dog and to have all these issues. And you think, gosh, if only these were just behind us, if only we could make progress, if only I could see change quicker. Um, everything would be okay, everything will be fine if we can get there where we want to go. Um, and very often uh, the things we do actually sabotage exactly what we want to achieve and that is by wishing and wanting it to happen faster and um, move along quicker. We often find ourselves jumping from one thing to the next to try something else, to try something different. Um, to see what else there is, you know, and even though we know there are no quick fixes, we still believe that there's a magic wand out there that can, uh, you know, wave the magic wand and, and miracles can happen. And yes, miracles can happen for sure. But a lot of the time when we're coming from that space of, um, you know, waiting for that day to come, that thing to be fixed, that thing to change, it's often the very thing that gets in our way. So, what I'm going to tell you today is my five top tips that I've learned from my own journey with my dog, um, uh, specifically with Charlie, who's who's been a real um, struggle for us, for himself and for me, <laughs> I'll say for many, many years. Um, we're on the other side now. Life is, is really easy for us and I understand him and he understands me. We trust each other and it's um, life is good. Life is good for us. But it wasn't always plain sailing and it's certainly um, I've learned a lot along the way as well as through my own through my as I said, my own dogs and through clients um, and their dogs. So I'm going to get stuck in um, and tell you what my top five actually when I was writing out the list there were more than five <laughs> but I'll give you I think there was seven or eight of the top ones. Mm. So first and foremostly unlabel it you know when we call our dogs reactive or oversensitive or fearful anxious etc we are putting a label on the on onto that behavior onto that dog and in some ways labeling is good because we get to understand them and especially if perhaps if we're explaining this to other people where we say um you know, my dog is anxious, my dog feels anxious, please be aware, etc. It sometimes is helpful in that way. But when we continue to talk about our dogs as um, as anxious, fearful, overexcitable, whatever, we're labeling them and we're putting a box around that. All right. And when we do that, and I've noticed this from my own experience, not from my dogs, but also from my children, when we label something and give them a, you know, a... Um, a name for it and say this is who you are we are saying this is who you are and it's very difficult then for that individual to change out of that energy that you keep putting on with that label so be very mindful of the words that you use um, around your dog because we're saying that there's something wrong with them we're saying that they're damaged that they're not okay that they're um they're not good. They're not perfect the way they are right now. Just as we are on our journeys, something is, you know. So please be very mindful of using that word, even though, as I say, it's a label that's sometimes helpful. Most of the times it's very unhelpful. And then try to take that word away from your vocabulary. Use something else. Um, it's just where that your dog is right now. Um, on their journey that's all right and there's nothing perfectionism is a 
<laughs> it's it's not there. There is no such thing. Perfect is imperfect. All right. It's imperfectly perfect. So unlabel them. The second one is, oh, the, I wanted to add to that as well, is behavior is more complex than we realize. And this is something that I really want you to, to think about. When we give dogs labels with, you know, aggressive, reactive, etc., it's a lot more complex than that. Behavior is so complex. And the more I learn about it over the years and the more I've studied and researched and done courses, the more I realize I know nothing. And this is actually a bit of a, a thing. I saw a meme about this in, in the industry in, you know, with dog trainers groups the other day. And it's so true. The more we, the less we know about it, the more we think we know. And the more we actually realize how complex behavior is. And there's so many factors playing into it that to be very honest, um, to say that we can change behavior, to say that we can resolve things is... Um, <laughs> what is the word? I want to ta say, take off your hat and say, no, you know, this is actually not possible because we know behavior change can only come from that individual and their experience is so unique and so many things are playing into that, that it's, it can only come from that individual. It can only come from them. We can't be arrogant enough to say, I want to change this behavior or I need to change this behavior or it needs to look different. It has to come from the individual and it has to come from them in there when they're ready and as they're ready to uncover that or heal that or advance from that. So please remember that behavior is really, really complex, a lot more complex than we think. The next one is letting go of the outcome. Yeah, we all know what we'd like, what we'd like it to look like, the ideal of what we would like it to look like. We'd like to be able to take our dogs everywhere, go do things with them not have you know have visitors around without having troubles etc but again we we're going for this perfection this perfect picture of what it should look like and when we do that we're setting ourselves up for disappointment we're setting ourselves up for um not uh, unmet expectations and then feeling that disappointment so having that goal in mind of what it should look like or what we want to achieve is can be really dangerous because it's not about us again it's about the dog that we would like to see that change. And we cannot set goals and timelines for anybody, any other individual that is goes for our dogs, it goes for people in our family, it goes for friends, etc. We can't set goals for them. They've got it's got to want, they've got to want that. They've got to um, want that from the inside. Okay. They want to change because they want something. Ask, you know, ask yourself when you set a goal for somebody or for yourself for instance if you set a goal for yourself i want to achieve xyz it's because you feel motivated to change inside you want that something different and it's the same with the dog if they want to respond differently feel differently we've got to help them to just feel differently and that's it they are the ones that have the change they are the ones that that um, respond to that change and decide that they want to do things differently or try things differently so it's really, really difficult to, to have, you know, let go of that outcome and just say, let's just see how this unfolds, which leads us to the next one about, you know, not fixing. We talk about this a lot, not fixing your dog versus supporting. All you do is support that individual to be the best they can. That's all we really need to do, because the moment we start again saying it needs to look like this, it needs to tick that box. We're setting ourselves up for for disappointment all right because it may happen naive is a beautiful word yes thank you <laughs> tina i've just seen that it is totally naive to think that we can go in there and change behavior the way we think we can um for another being that is so um yes you know so it's all about support supporting and and the whole dog all you're doing is the same as you would do for yourself is you're just trying to live a healthy happy life as best you can under the circumstances that you have with the tools that you have right now with the knowledge that you have right now and just grow that every day because that is what eventually is going to lead um, to to that change happening from yourself and from the dog self from the inside when you just stay on that path of support 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 supporting the nervous system supporting the dog's health supporting them emotional well-being and supporting their physical well-being all of those things that we know that is holistic 
that's that's what our aim should be. Our aim should not be to change behavior. Our aim should be just to support that individual um, to be the best version they can. Um, go slow to go fast. We've all heard of this baby steps, baby steps, baby steps. We all talk about it, but it really is in reality. It's it's real. You know, if we try and make big leaps, um, we may make a big leap at some stage, but then it may be just as big a fall backwards <laughs> when we have, you know, when something else crops up and we kind of feel like we've had a setback, it feels bigger if we've made a bigger leap forward. So if we have just baby steps forward and a little one back again and baby steps forward and a little one back again, it doesn't seem so big when you have a setback, if you're trying to take leaps. So it's just those baby step progresses. And that's where we got to be mindful to concentrate and to focus on those little, celebrate those little baby steps when we're making them. Because the more we do celebrate those baby steps, the more we're going to see, look back, look back and be able to see that progress over time. You know the story and the analogy of the turtle, turtle tortoise and the hare in the winning the race. Slow and steady wins the race, and that's exactly what it is with when it comes to ourselves and to our dogs to, um, you know, to grow and to, to develop. That's what it is. It's just personal development for ourselves or our dogs as they're growing through life, right? That's really what it is, as they're developing their character, as they're developing their confidence, their self-esteem, as they're doing their own healing. That's what it is. That's, that's the journey. Um, what else? Support versus fixing. Yeah, don't focus on the problem. Focus on what's what's good for both of you. Focus on what makes you uh, both feel good. Focus on your um, on on the things that you do well. You know, maybe you can remember at school, um, and there was somebody who was really good at maths, and somebody who was really good at art, and perhaps you were really good at sport. Whatever it was, we all have our little talents and our gifts. Um, and the things that we enjoy doing, the things that we're good at. And why not? We don't have to be all-rounders. You know, we can be good at what we like to do or what, what our gifts and talents are. So find out your dog's gifts and talents, which are generally doggy things that they love to do, like sniffing or, um, you know, maybe they do love to do some training tricks with you, whatever that is. What is what are they good at? What do they love doing? That's what you need to focus on. Do they love um, caring for other dogs? Do they love for caring for people? Are they very um, affectionate? What are, what are their qualities that, they're, that, um, that you love in them and that you can see make them happy? Go for that, you know. That's where you're going to build on their strengths um, and not worry about their weaknesses too much. The weaknesses will come with as 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 they develop and as they grow in that trust and confidence so that's where we should be focusing on focus on their on their building their strength and their confidence and their trust and the other stuff will come with it um go slow to go fast we've done that don't be scared of management and i think a lot of us get scared of um, thinking that management is a cop-out management is a way of just sweeping the problem under the carpet uh, whatever it is, or my dog will never learn if I just keep managing the situation all the time. Um, that's true. We don't want to. We don't want to just um, mask the problem, pretend it doesn't exist. That's that's not the way to do it. But we mustn't be scared of management, especially in the er early stages where we um, it's going to make us feel more comfortable. It's going to make the dog feel more comfortable. Perhaps other people or other dogs feel more comfortable. Don't be scared of management. It's it's really a valuable thing, and it's not you know it's it's. Don't think that oh I should be shouldn't be managing. I should be training my dog to do what I want them to do. No, use management. Use those baby gates. Use um, your own savvy. You know, don't take your dog into situations where they're going to struggle or somebody else might judge you or your dog. You know, make sure that your walks are safe and happy and find places to go for for that really focus on the management piece especially in the early days because that's what's going to help you and your dog to grow your confidence um, and to prevent you from feeling judged and having all those negative experiences it's going to help to grow your trust and your confidence so don't be scared of management it's not a cop-out okay that one and then the last one do the inner work i can't express this more 
than anything that I've learned before is if we start to do our own inner work around the, the issues, the judgments, the disappointments, the um, not feeling good enoughs, all of that around our dogs, the things that come up because of our dog's behavior. When we start to do the inner work and we start to concentrate on ourselves around that, we start to let go of those limiting beliefs. We start to believe in ourselves. We start to believe in magic. We start to grow that relationship and that connection. That's when the heart, that's when the real magic starts to happen, I promise you, because we know that we, when we change our inner world, our perception and our response to the outer world changes. And that can make such a huge difference, huge, huge difference. So any of you here today, does any of this resonate with you? Which ones of those jump out at you? Which ones resonate? Um, I know many of you are doing all of these things, but it's also nice to hear them from time to time again just to remind us. And then lastly, what I want to say is, well, why do these things work? Why is it that these things will actually make my progress faster? Because they sound like all good things, but how's that actually going to make us progress faster? So here's a couple of reasons why. First of all, what we resist persists. I'm sure you've heard of that as well. And it's, it's so true, and it's true by the laws of nature as well. The more we resist what is what we currently have, like I don't want this, this is bad, this is not good, I want to change it, it makes me feel uncomfortable, my dog is uncomfortable. We're putting up a huge amount of resistance around that, energetic resistance with the way we feel, with the words we're using, with the actions we're taking. We're saying this is not okay, I need to change it. And with that comes a lot of resistance and a lot of pressure, pressure on ourselves, pressure on our dogs. And this is the bit, one of the biggest things that stands in the way of making progress is this pressure and this resistance that we're putting in the way. We're not accepting and going with the flow of what is and working with that. That's the way we're going to change versus, versus I need this to change. I don't like this, what it is now. So let go of that resistance. All these things, like I said, you know, not labeling, letting go of outcomes. That's the resistance piece that we are putting in the way there. So let go of, you know, move the resistance out the way. The second one is the more when we're concentrating, not focusing on the problem, we're concentrating on what we do like and what we do enjoy. We're enjoying life more. We are having more fun. We are less stressed. We are less worried and anxious. And that again is going to open that door to less resistance and inviting in more of the stuff we do want. And then there's some real mechanics around here as well as in the brain, as far as um, what we focus on is what the brain thinks we want to see or hear or do. And you, some of you may have heard this, this um, phenomenon with the reticular activating system that in our brains that if you've like, let's say when you're pregnant, you will notice every other pregnant woman in, in the neighborhood. If you want to get in a new puppy, you're going to be noticing puppies in every corner of the neighborhood and where you're driving on the internet, etc. It's just like they are going to keep popping up there. And that's because you've made a mental note of what you want and what you're putting out there. And so your brain says, oh, that's what you want to pay attention to. That's what you want to pay attention to. So when we say that we want to, we want um, this to change and that we're labeling it, we're saying, you know, focusing on the reactivity, focusing on the, 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 the anxiety, focusing on this, that, the next thing. That's what our brains are going to help us to see more about. So we'll see, you know, we, we're going to start experiencing in this. And this is a true thing that's happened in my life is the when I was focused on my dog's behavior, wrong, bad behavior, which shouldn't we shouldn't label like that. When I was focused on, oh gosh, we're going to meet other dogs. Oh gosh, somebody's going to judge me. I'm telling you, I had more of those experiences then in that part of my life than I do now because I'm not focused on it and I'm not worried about it. So you honestly will start to draw your focus and your attention onto the things that you are focused on. So the more you focus on what you do want and the outcome you do want is that's where the focus is going. That's what you're going to start attracting more in your life. And that's because your brain is wired to do that for you, to, to you know, help you to see that in the outer world more. So there's some real mechanics there. 
And then also when we are open-minded like this and we don't have a fixed outcome, we don't have this is what it lo should look like, this is what uh, when I want it to happen, this is when we allow different outcomes to happen. And I think this is quite magical because sometimes when we originally start on this journey, we think this is what I want my end result to look like. But actually that could change. So for me, for instance, uh, again, right at the beginning of my journey, I wanted a dog that was, you know, really attentive and by my side and focused on me all the time and, you know, not focused on the outside world and not chasing this and that. The next thing I wanted my dogs to be focused with me and I wanted, you know, us to have this, this fun time together all the time. That's changed for me. I don't want that intensive interaction when we're out and about. I want us both to be able to enjoy nature, to yes, to be attentive to each other, but not to that extent that I had initially wanted it. I wanted more of this freedom and this relaxation when we're out on our walks and in nature. So I, that, that, that goal or that end result or that North Star for me has changed. And that's because I've allowed, I have, didn't have a fixed outcome. I've allowed it to open up and play out the way it should, the way it, as, it, as we develop, as our dogs develop. And suddenly I realized that I wanted something different than the thing that I wanted in the beginning. So I think this is, there's lots of magic in here, but it's also real brain science, real biology stuff that makes this happen. Um, but I certainly believe that all of these things are going to help us to make you and everybody else make your progress faster to where you want to go, to where you want to be. And who knows where that is? Who knows where that, that journey will lead you and to what will unfold from there, what you will learn along the way. Um, it's really exciting. And remember this journey, we, we're alive. We are constantly growing, developing, moving forward. We're always changing the Nature always changes. Everything is in flux. It's never the same. So, and the more we can realize that, the, the easier it is to say it. it's not something to get to. It's not a goal to achieve. It's just um, about growing and learning and going through stages of life, which are very, very normal. So that's my tips for you today. Uh, Tracy says, focusing on my dog not sleeping may have actually stopped the sleeping. Until yes, so Tracy recently had an experience where she felt, you know, because literature said, you know, your dogs need to have X, Y amount of, of sleep a day. And she was worried that her dog wasn't getting enough sleep. And so she was really focused on trying to make him sleep. And the moment she dropped that resistance around that and said, well, you know, maybe you are getting enough sleep for you, for you as an individual, because it seems to be okay. You seem to be coping well with that. Suddenly it wasn't a problem anymore. And <laughs> it turns out that, yeah, it's not a problem. It wasn't a problem anyway for him. So yeah, some real lessons there in letting go and, you know, not focusing on the on whatever we think is is the issue because sometimes for the dog it's not an issue it's not good all right everybody thank you for joining i don't know if anyone else is going to add their own tips to that it would be lovely if you have some of your own tips about what you've done to help um, your progress to fast track your progress but certainly i believe that um when we do these things and you know take our minds off i know that it's uncomfortable and i know that we want the pain and the discomfort for ourselves and our dogs to go away. But as I said, the more we put up that resistance against it, calling it bad, calling it not okay, the less we are going to make progress around that. So thanks, everybody. Thank you for joining me. I wish you a wonderful Tuesday and I will see you next week again. Bye for now.